quick show of hands. How many of you have heard the term blockchain? Okay. How many of you understand the mechanics of blockchain? Okay. Good. To keep up with the thought leadership here at ACU, I'll be discussing blockchain's effect on the new sharing economy. There's a lot of misconception with blockchains in that the blockchain is associated with Bitcoin. But blockchain is the underlying technology in which the Bitcoin cryptocurrency is built upon. To better understand blockchain, let's frame it like we're in the classroom and the professor is grading the final. Now, let's increase those number of professors to 10, 100, or 1,000, and they're distributed around the world. This demonstrates the decentralized nature of the blockchain that grows larger and more secure with time. Now let's say those professors are auditing and coming to a consensus that your grades are correct. This increases the trust and validity in your answers or your transactions. Now let's say students didn't do so well on the final and they wanted to hack a particular block. They would have to have the computing power of Google in order to take over a particular block. If for whatever reason there is a discrepancy within a transaction, it's easily detectable and which translates to the immutability of the blockchain in that it cannot be changed or modified. Now, once all the transactions have been audited and approved, the transaction is written to the blockchain, transparent to everyone within the blockchain network. Now, although the previous example was just an example, organizations and countries are making these opportunities a reality. And one of the most notable cases of blockchain within a supply chain environment, in an effort that would normally take them six and a half days, Walmart was able to recall one batch of mangoes in just 2.2 seconds. This was done with a blockchain they created in collaboration with IBM. In one of the first cases of our federal government using blockchain, Catherine Holm shared in her TED Talk how she helped indict federal agents on fraud, extortion, and embezzlement using the immutable, transparent nature of the blockchain. At the state level, Ohio became the first state to allow organizations to pay taxes using the Bitcoin cryptocurrency. And on an even larger scale, countries such as Ghana and the Republic of Georgia are embracing this technology to track and trace land ownership within their communities. Also, Switzerland and Slovenia are looking to become blockchain nations as they are incorporating blockchain within their future growth strategies. To understand how the blockchain would work in certain environments, such as a supply chain environment, one of my peers, Daniel Stanton, created this blockchain simulation tool in collaboration with the University of South Dakota and the Air Force Institute of Technology. In this example here, we are transferring ownership of an asset to the Department of Defense. This would be considered a permissioned blockchain where users with credentials to access the website can only view those transactions. Now, we could also have a permissionless blockchain where those transactions would be transparent to everyone. A permissionless blockchain would be applicable to, say, the tracking and tracing of the foods we consume. So how do we know that the organic fruits are truly organic? If we had a blockchain application on our phones, we could scan our quick response code or barcode on those foods to see the transactions from farm to grocery store. 
Now, going back to our classroom example, once the transaction is initiated, those users or nodes are notified. Once they reach a consensus, that block is written to the blockchain. Now, imagine all these transactions as blocks within a blockchain. Now, what if this was your full medical history that is transparent to all medical practitioners around the world? Now, what if this same medical history could save the lives of others? If medical practitioners used the blockchain as a knowledge base, they could track and trace and view this information to search similar symptoms and diagnoses to potentially save the lives of others. Now, one more time, I'll make sure you understand this. Once the transaction is initiated, the nodes come to a consensus, the block is written to the chain, and you have the blockchain. One of the most important pieces to the blockchain are the hashes. The hashes perform two things. One, it encrypts the data or information within that particular block. And think of this encryption similar to your credit card transactions. And two, it creates the link or the glue that keep the blockchain together. If there is any kind of discrepancy within the blockchain, it's easily detectable, which is how the blockchain maintains its security and immutability. Now, we talked about organizations using these capabilities, but the underlying question is, what about the people? How can this technology, referred to by Gartner and the Harvard Business Review, as an innovation that could potentially rival the internet, benefit us? Within the transportation industry, we all know about Uber and Lyft. But Uber and Lyft sometimes command between 20 and 40% commission. They also are decentralized in nature, which led to 57 million accounts being hacked uh, by users of Uber. Organizations such as Arcade City, Snagride and Lazus are creating a decentralized blockchain that is removing the middleman and keeping the money with the people. Moving on to the hospitality industry, what if we could go to a rental unit, type in a private code, and the door would unlock, and we could have our transactions automatically performed without a middleman. This is what an organization called B2B Token is creating with smart contracts, which are self-executing contracts that execute based on predetermined rules, is doing within the hospitality industry. To counter against fake news and troll farms that we've seen during the last presidential election, along with other events, an organization called Sapien is creating a trusted, decentralized environment that rewards their content providers based on a consensus-based approach. And along the same lines, organizations such as DTube and other organizations are creating a decentralized network that, again, are using tokens and coins to reward the content providers. Now, we went through a number of examples here, but we have to share the capabilities of this technology outside of these four walls. Typically, when we're driving down the road, we see new construction and we wonder what's being built. We see the resources, we see the, re we see the other areas, but in reality, not much is really happening. That's where we are with blockchain from a societal aspect. I ask that you refer back to the examples that we spoke about today and think about how you can improve on them 
think about how you can take them a step further. If we do this, we can contribute to the true sharing economy, and if we come together as a collective, the sky's the limit to what we can build. Thank you. Thank you.